Section 10 talks about prescription drugs that inhibit enzyme activity. Um, there are several common prescription drugs that um, are beneficial because they inhibit enzyme activity. And so we're going to just go over a couple of these. Um, one class are called ACE inhibitors. You may have heard of these. ACE stands for angiotensin converting enzyme, which is a hormone that's involved in blood regulation, blood pressure regulation, sorry. What it does is it converts angiotensin from its inactive form to its active form. So here we have a representation of the inactive form. And so your body's got this hanging around, waiting to be used. And when blood pressure is needed to be increased, this enzyme converts the angiotensinogen, which is a zymogen, to the active um, form just by cutting off, you know, trimming off these two um, amino acids at the end. So that causes your blood pressure to go up. ACE inhibitors block the action of this enzyme. So your body wants to raise the blood pressure, but this enzyme doesn't function, and so your blood pressure remains lower. Sulfa drugs also inhibit enzyme activity. These were discovered in 1932 and consists of a whole family of derivatives of sulfanilamide. They have antibacterial activity. And when we say antibiotic, what we mean is a substance that kills bacteria or inhibits their growth. Um, usually what the way these work is by inhibiting specific enzymes that are essential to the bacteria, but they don't affect the metabolism of the host organism. Because there's lots of ways to kill bacteria, right? You could, you know, freeze it or put it in some really caustic chemical or run it through an autoclave and, and fry it, basically. Well, you can't do that to kill bacteria in your body because that kills your body also. So the antibiotics um, often act on the enzymes that the bacteria use. So sulfonilamide has a structure similar to para-aminobenzoic acid, and that's, here's para-aminobenzoic acid, which that one's a, a simple enough molecule that we should be able to draw the structure of that just from its name. Here's the benzoic acid, and it's got an amino group in the para-location. So sulfonilamide is similar in structure to the PABA, and this is needed to synthesize folic acid. Because the sulfonilamide is similar to the PABA, it acts as a competitive inhibitor in the enzymes and prevents the enzymes from functioning. There's a, a group of, of these different drugs, and they're going to vary in this R group over here. So there's sulfonilamide, sulfacetamide, sulfasoxazole, etc. And they're showing them here in order of increasing effectiveness against E. coli. One antibiotic will not work against all bacteria. And so you choose the uh, antibiotic appropriately for the bacteria you need to fight. Another group of antibiotics are the penicillins. These were accidentally discovered in 1928. Um, it wasn't until later that they were shown to be effective antibiotics. Um, these work by inhibiting transpeptidases which are enzymes that strengthen the bacterial cell walls. The, the penicillins act as very selective competitive inhibitors, and they are also irreversible inhibitors. So what happens is uh, there's a beta-lactam ring that opens up and bonds to the enzyme, and it bonds permanently, and so it completely disables that enzyme. Some bacteria produce um, an enzyme called penicillinase, which protects them from the penicillin. So this is uh, a phenomenon we've heard about in the news that you know the overuse of antibiotics is giving rise to these antibiotic-resistant bacteria, and it's definitely a problem. And the way this penicillinase works is it binds to the penicillin and opens the beta-lactam ring on it before it can bond to the transpeptidase and disable it. So it kind of takes it out before it can do its job. 
here's the structures. Here's the um, general structure of penicillin, and here's that beta-lactam ring. And what happens is, here comes the penicillin into the active site on the enzyme. That lactam ring opens up, and it covalently bonds to the serine residue there. And then it just stays there. It's irreversible, and so it completely takes out that active site. And what the um, penicillinase does is it will open this ring before it has a chance to bond to the enzyme. And so then the penicillin cannot function as it's intended to. So these are some of the um, different R groups in, this, in the family of penicillin drugs. And you'll notice all their names end in illin. If you're allergic to one of them, there's a fairly good chance you'll be allergic to all of them. And so you've got to be careful with that. There are also interactions um, between enzymes and foods, and some of these affect prescription medications. Some of this has to do with how the medications themselves are metabolized. So in your liver, cytochrome P450 enzymes are what metabolize a lot of these different medications. If you have, uh, if you're ingesting a food or some herbal remedies also do this, that contains something that inhibits the cytochrome P450 enzyme, then your body will not metabolize the drug and the drug levels will rise in your body because your doctor's giving you a dosage assuming that your liver is metabolizing the drug at a certain rate. Grapefruit is the most well-known and well-studied uh, food that interacts with this. You eat, eat a lot of grapefruit, which, you know, grapefruit has benefits, it's good for you, but when you're taking certain medications, the grapefruit interacts with the cytochrome P450 liver enzymes and causes your body to not metabolize the drugs. And so then the concentration levels rise, and that can cause some pretty significant effects. So you got to watch out for certain foods and some herbal remedies, too.